So we can, we can get into the green car business, yes. but then we also need to deal with the mm -hmm. issues of our litter laws, yes. because I'm sure that in Amsterdam, your uh, litter laws, and in Germany, that they're much stricter than they're in Trinidad and Tobago. We have a constant problem. I mean, it's very difficult to convince people, and you have to, I think you have to make it fun, or you have to make it a nice, give it a nice turn to um, convince people to have to do it. And I think Trinidad is such a beautiful country. I mean, what you have on trees, flowers, butterflies, birds, it would be so sad if everything goes and perishes. So. And you see it as going that way? Or what do you think, Stephen? You were giving us the example of Haiti as a country that mm -hmm. didn't care enough mm -hmm. about its environment, or perhaps wasn't able to. And uh, it's with disastrous consequences. Well, I think many social, environmental, economic issues are all really related. And people don't always realize that how, how much of a factor how the environment's managed and dealt with and interacted with can affect their lives economically. There's huge costs. I mean, we've seen this recently in the Gulf of Mexico, enormous costs of a cleanup. Um, there are other hidden costs, like you know we discussed earlier, cancer. What's the? How much does it cost to to take care of someone who's contracted in a cancer from an environmental source? Um, in the case of Haiti, you know they didn't treat, they deforested the, the, that side of Hispaniola almost completely, and it's a big component of why they have the economic problems they have now in Haiti. So, and there are examples of this all over the world. I try, I'm kind of an environmental history buff, and really not that many new things happen. There are examples and case studies through, throughout history of upheavals and social upheavals, economic and political upheavals that actually had an environmental component to it. So I think there's a lot to be learned from what's already been done. We don't need to reinvent the wheel to see that we need to take care of where we live. And as you said, this is a watershed moment in our history, and now's the time. If we want to turn the corner and we want to change, now's the time. Well, it's a wonderful opportunity, and nations historically don't get very many chances where, they, where a country sort of pauses and says, which direction do we want to go? And um, right now, you could incorporate changes that will make the, the entire nation more sustainable, the people happier and healthier, and much of it can be profitable and good for business as well. I want to come back to that point, but now we need to take a short break. Once again, we remind you to send in your comments and photographs to cleaningupthemess at guardian.co.tt. We'll be right back with more on this environmental series on CNC3. Welcome back to the final segment of Cleaning Up the Mess. This is CNC3. My guests today are Frauke Luning, musician, and Stephen Greenleaf, environmental consultant. Stephen, I want to ask you to address this question. A lot of people think that being environmentally sound means bad business, or it's simply boring. How do you get people to get out of that mindset? Well, many of the... There's Many of the biggest, corp biggest and most successful corporations in the world are taking on the issue of corporate responsibility and sustainability wholeheartedly. Yeah. Starbucks, McDonald's, Walmart, Home Depot have all, are all working towards make, becoming better corporate citizens, um, which sounds fine. It's an admirable goal, but it's also improving their bottom line. It's helping these companies be more profitable. Being greener means being more efficient, um, analyzing the processes by which they manufacture things, using energy more efficiently, 
So it's win, it's a, what, the phrase is triple bottom line, the social, economic, and environmental benefits to modifying the way that they do business. And the corporate leaders of the world have all caught on to this and are moving ahead full force, and it's profitable for them to do that, which means it's more likely that they're going to continue to improve their practices, they're going to have more money to pay, pay their salaries, and everybody gets to win. And now this government, I believe, is looking at its infrastructure all over again. They're looking at flooding, they're looking at drainage, they're looking at roads. How do we go green with our infrastructure? Well, that's, a, that's a very complex <laughs> topic. You have a lot of different jurisdictions, a lot of different stakeholders. Uh, I mean, the first step is to, is to make sure that green is on the table. To, once it's part of the discussion, you have a lot of very talented, very clever people in Trinidad and Tobago who will, I'm certain, um, come up with some innovative solutions to do things. I mean, obviously you can m make laws and there should probably be some regulatory changes. Um, I would say that a common problem we all know in Trinidad is law enforcement isn't necessarily always what it needs to be. And that's true in the environmental field as well. Um, so I think it would be nice to see some sort of body enacted that could really be more like rangers, environmental police. And there are, there is actually legislation in Trinidad for different groups to, to have those. Okay. Well, thank you, Stephen. Frauke, do you have any closing remarks? Yes, I think stimulating this kind of actions would be making it more attractive, like that it is more appealing. Like in Holland, we have a lot of young entrepreneurs who feel it, it is very yeah, modern, very fresh, very hip to be environmentally engaged. And I think you have to change the whole image of this. And once you make it attractive and you want to be the most environmentally responsible person, then you will be more successful with implementing all these changes, I think. Froka, thank you so much for your insight as well as Stephen, thank you again. And that's where we wrap up. I want to thank our guests once again for coming on. In the coming weeks, we want more of you to come on the show to engage with us in a meaningful way. We at Guardian Media are very encouraged by your participation in our drive to clean up the mess. Many of Trinidad and Tobago's committed environmentalists are coming on board with us as guest columnists in our Thursday column in The Guardian. Hundreds of you, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, have joined our Facebook page. You want to partner with us to lobby the government to pass the draft beverage and waste management bills. You want to recycle. So continue writing to us and send us your photographs, both ugly and beautiful, to cleaningupthemess at guardian.co.tt. Continue to do your part. Call Carib Glass to recycle your bottles in return for cash on 662-2231-7, extension 286. To recycle plastics called Guardian Holdings, which has begun a pilot project for plastic recycling. Call them on 632-5433, extension 2059. I urge you not to litter. Recycle your paper, glass and plastics as much as you can and work towards creating a cleaner, greener and more beautiful Trinidad and Tobago. This is CNC3. I'm Ira Mathur. Until we meet again, have a great Sunday.